Hi there, I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. Uh, we are a local yarn shop and we do a mostly weekly podcast. Um, it's hot here. Today is Thursday. It's when we're videotaping. So maybe by the time you see this, it will have cooled off a little bit. I don't know. I wanted to show you, oh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. We have a yarn dyeing workshop that is coming up August 24th, and I think it's from 1 to 3 or 1.30 to 3.30. I think that should be online. You can sign up. And we're going to dye um, three different kinds of yarn, uh, sort of three different kinds. We're going to dye a yarn blank, which is an already knitted piece of fabric of yarn that you'll dye in a pattern or you can make it striped and then when it's after it's been steamed you can um, undo it so you pull it apart and roll it up into a ball and then you use it from that or some people do like to knit right from the which you can right from the blank um, <coughs> but I pref you can just pull it apart as you as you go which is kind of interesting but the yarn, because it's been, it's knit by machine and it's been like that, it has a ripple to it. So it's better to um, steam it, let it hang, and then roll it into a ball so that you get rid of that crimping. Uh, the other thing, there are a couple things that are coming up. Our yarn crawl, annual yarn crawl, is going to be September 26th to the 29th. Is that right? 30th something. Anyway, it's that Thursday, the 26th, and we will be having again a Miss Babs trunk show. I wanted to show you what I'm working on. I have a whip work in progress, and I'm pretty excited about it because I was looking for kind of a challenge or to knit something interesting, which I might rue the day I said that, but that I chose this. This is called Snooky, and it's from Kate Davies. And Snooky means an old Scots word for woolen pullover or smock. Oh, I said it wrong. Smooky. Isn't Snooky or Smooky? Is she that Jersey Snooky? That was her name. The um, Jersey Shore person. Anyway, it has um, cables and uh, lots of um, interesting work on it. It has, um, it's from charts. So you, you must learn to read a chart. And I think charts are fun. Um, this one I'm going to color code. My printer at home, I might have to print this, reprint this because it might be color coded. My printer at home was only doing black and white, so I have to check that out. But I'm excited about it. And the yarn that I'm using is an Isayer yarn called Echo Baby. And we have three colors of it. Um, do they have names? They do not. This one is 4S. It's kind of a gray. Um, and we have... 8S, this is brown, this is brown hues, and then this one, and I don't think I have the label for this, but this is a, a really creamy um, oatmeal-y color, which I really like. This looks like a little chainette. It's like a chain, it's a chainette construction, With, uh, which means that it cotton. was, basically it looks like a little knitted cord. and. Um, it's kind of cool. But anyway, it's made of baby alpaca. made of baby alpaca and organic cotton. So it's kind of a neat fiber. So I've just started the bottom edge. And I'm looking forward. I'm about to go into the pattern, which I think will be fun. So I'm looking forward to doing that. That'll probably be a bit of a long-term project wanted to show you the progress and tell a funny story on myself. This is my Jethro cardigan. 
which I had one sleeve finished and I had a second sleeve almost finished when I put them up to each other to I was measuring to see um, how long I wanted to make this and I had a bunch of increases. This one was much bigger, was wider. That was my first clue I'd made a mistake. And my mistake was I am using the shorties, which I love. The little shorties, which I can... I don't think I have it in this bag, but they come in a pack and you, they're interchangeables and it, they're great for knitting sleeves because you can knit a whole sleeve in the round on them. But these you can, um, they're interchangeable so the tips come off. Well, I mistakenly took out, this is my senior brain working, took out a size eight instead of a size seven. So I'd knit the whole long thing on an eight and didn't realize. And I so wondered why it seemed tip. a little big. So double check. You should always double check what you do. I had, yeah, you should always have your little <laughs> knit check. But it was me taking it out of the little package, taking out the wrong size. So I just took out the size next to the size that I wanted. Um, so you should check a lot of the stuff that you do. And also, um, I was helping, oh here are the kits, they're wonderful. This one is the twist shorties, these are, um, so the little tip can be two inches or three inches, and this particular kit has US zero to three in it, and this has what I was using. And I'll show you the inside, I've shown these before, but just in case you missed it, these are um, US four to eight. So it comes in this package. I, I'm sure I've showed this just recently again. But this comes open. And I happen to pick up the 8s instead of the 7s. Big mistake. Luckily I caught myself and hadn't bound off. Um, and didn't try the sweater. I would have been shocked when I tried the sweater on to see the difference. Anyway, so we have these. And they even come on a larger set, which is, I think, 9 to 15, 9 to something. They're bigger. Maybe they're not as many, 9 to. But they come in that. We can it's order like, them. It's only 9, 10, 11. I'm not, Might be. I'm not sure. I have it in my, I think, in my other bag. In any case. It's so good. check yourself. Also, check when you cast on. This cast on, I was just showing you that sweater, the Smoky sweater with 278 stitches. So the best way to do that, and I'm sure I've said this too before, is put in markers every 20 or 50 stitches. Um, I had a customer yesterday who was struggling and in part it was because her initial count for her cast on was off and um, who knows why. Um, but anyway, you should put in something that, and then when you put the marker in, go back and count and make sure it's 20. Put a marker, 20. Put a marker, go back and count that 20, make sure it's 20. So double check, triple check yourself, really, because it will save you a lot of um, trouble. I wanted to show you the next thing I'm gonna make. This is a relatively new yarn, um, and it's called Brushed Silky Cashmere. And it's 23% silk and 77% cashmere. And this is a sample the company sent us, which this is just light as a feather. So I'm going to make this um, pattern from Lamb and Kid called Popple bandana. And what it is, I have another picture, basically just here, a, a large bandana. Um, and what I plan on doing is using this as the main color and this as the um, 
contrast. And I think I'm gonna, I probably will try to make it bigger. I think it's, well, let's see. Does it start, I think it starts at the tip, at the bottom of the V and works its way up. But I may try to um, see if I can make it bigger because I've got these skeins, which if you think they, these are 328 yards for $27. That's a bargain for um, cashmere and silk. So I think I'm going to try to make it bigger than um, the pattern says. Anyway, it's called Popple Bandana from Lamb and Kid. Well, that's my next whip. And then I wanted to show you, again, we showed the um, emotional support chicken. So we, just, we had lots of requests for kits, so we decided to make kits. And I'll show you. And we also were asking people to name our chicken. So come up with some chickens. In the kit, you get two little eyes to sew on. This one, the main, this is the main color for this kit. This is the stripe, so let's put him over, bring him over here so you can see. So this would be the main color. This is the stripe. And then you get two little skeins for the um, his little crown or whatever you call that. This and this and then one for the, the beak. And we'll probably come up with names for these so you can find them online. So we have that one. And, oh, and the yarn. I didn't mention what the yarn was. This is Earth Yarns, um, Unique Worsted, this Stripes, and the Stripe Yarn, the yarn for the Stripe is Vintage Worsted. We have it written down. Robin, there's a note in here with each one written down, what they are. Here is another one. This is Vintage. Again, for the stripes, and this is the striping yarn, and again, it's unique worsted. Um, so that's a fun one. And next we have, this is a really fun one. This is the main color, and look at the stripe. I thought that was just fun. Again, vintage and unique worsted. And here's another fun choice. This is unique worsted for the stripe. And this is, I mean, for the main color. And this is the stripe. It's the gray in vintage. Then we have, and I think you needed two skeins of this. This is what this guy is made in, and this is um, Uptown Worsted, and the colorway is Titanium Heather. And it makes this fun, um, fun sort of, I don't know if you'd call it a marled gray. If you look at it closely, it's marled. And then this vintage worsted for the stripe. And we have a few more. So are they female or male? Uh-oh, are they female or male? This is a chicken. She's a hen. <laughs> it's, a f it's a female. He'd be a rooster, right? That would be a male. Male? I guess. I don't know my chickens. <laughs> I don't know. Again, here's the main color. And this is the stripe. It's a little more subtle. Is what they're all, we're going to name. We'll do this by name, so then you you can you feel free to name your chicken whatever you want. I keep dropping that. Where did the little eyes go? There they are. So this one, the main color is this, and Ooh, that's rusty. Rusty, yeah. 
and this is the stripe. I think you may have enough to make two chickens. I'm not sure in these kits. And this one is, again, did we have this one already? This is the main color and this is the stripe. Was that the same one? It is. It is. Okay, we have two of these. Two, two rusties. Two rusties. And then this one is wild. This is the main color and this is the stripe. So, super fun. And these will be online by the time you see this, I believe. And I think that's all I may have to say. Although, see again, I've talked about this before. I was wondering, why do I love to knit so much? And I don't think it's that I need it to relax or that I need to, because I'm not, or to relieve stress. I'm not a person who suffers from stress. Almost, I just, I'm not stressed. I don't let things stress me out ever. Um, so I don't really do it for that reason. I think it's because I have always loved clothes, for one. So I love to knit sweaters. Um, I loved having something to do with my hands because I've always been an artist and was a potter for a very long time. But I think I like the finished product. If I, Some people are process knitters, which we've talked about, who just love the process of sitting and knitting. Um, I, of course, like the sitting part, and I do like, I do like to knit. But I love, love the finished product, and I love putting together colors. Um, and those of you who have seen some of the stuff that I knit, usually there's a lot of color in it, if I can do it. Although you wouldn't know it by my, the sweater I'm doing now is very bland compared to what I usually do. Neutral. But, oh, neutral. it's neutral, Robin says. Um, so anyway, that's kind of why I like to knit, and I have lots of sweaters, and I just keep making them, and I can't, I have stacks of patterns that I would like to make. Although, it depends on my mood, which one I want to do. So I'm doing the smoky because I want to do one that's kind of complicated and will keep my attention and will give me something that I've wanted for a while. I've wanted a patterned sweater. So tell us why, um, why you knit. What, what appeals to you about knitting and choosing colors and patterns. Um, I never have a problem choosing color. And people often come to me and say, no, you're the, the color person. But I love color, and I love to be able to pick colors for people and for myself. So, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, that it's not too hot, and if it is hot, I hope you get to jump in a swimming pool or the ocean or something. So, take care, and we'll see you next time. And name our chicken. Oops, I forgot one thing. Can we go back? I forgot. Um, Yesterday was the end of our Rebecca Clow um, knit along, and we will be announcing the winners in a day or two. I have one person from the last knit along that I haven't been able to contact, and her name is Kelly Rogers. So if you're out there, Kelly, contact us because you were one of the winners from the last one. So don't forget to submit your entries for the contest. And that said, we are doing another knit along for the Rhinebeck sweater from Andrea Mowry. And people will be meeting, if you'd like to come, on Saturdays from three to five. And our wonderful Giovanna, who has made two of the sweaters, will be here to help you along with yours, to help you pick colors if you haven't already, and to help you along with the pattern. So I hope you'll come. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>